So we turn to the good news uh, according to uh, the, uh, the Dr. Luke. Luke's Gospel, chapter 1. And we have our Bibles open there. We continue to worship God and we pray and ask him to help us. Gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for every uh, remembrance of the birth of thy dear Son, Jesus. So thank you for this season. Thank you for Advent. Thank you for uh, joy that comes in believing. We pray, Lord God, you would uh, fill our lives with joy uh, in believing in Christ. Speak to us now and open your word to us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I wonder this morning, how, um, how's your Christmas list? Um, all I want for Christmas is, um, I'm sure many of you know that someone only wanted two front teeth. Uh, I don't know what you want. Uh, perhaps you're into a new phone or an Xbox or uh, whatever. But whatever your Christmas list, uh, your Christmas list is far too small. And it's far smaller than Mary's list. Uh, at uh, verse uh, 46 and following, uh, we have Mary's song. Uh, it's known as Mary's Magnificat. She magnifies uh, the Lord her God. Um, and it can be viewed uh, as Mary's Christmas list. Um, Christmas has not yet happened. Um, Jesus is still in Mary's womb. He's not yet in the manger. Uh, but all that she hopes for, uh, she uh, receives in advance by faith. Um, so we're going to look at Mary's Christmas list, what she's hoping for, and what she receives by faith before Jesus comes. Uh, before we do that, let's uh, just have a little bit of a recap about what we know of Mary. Um, so Mary's uh, a teenager, um, and she's doing teenage things. Um, uh, no doubt she's excited uh, about getting married. She's uh, betrothed to Joseph. Um, and uh, we read of her, verse uh, 26, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph. Um, and there she is. Um, She's just an ordinary woman, a teenager. Um, she's a Jew. She has an expectation that one day the Messiah will come. Uh, and everybody believed that. Uh, and she's a remarkable woman. She's a remarkable teenager. Uh, she's never greater than a woman. Um, but she is a great woman of faith. Um, you will know uh, that many have distorted her and made her into something that she never was or is. Um, she's just a teenager. Um, she's very ordinary. Um, but her, her life, um, her life changes. Um, that day she's out doing whatever she was doing, uh, her normal daily chores, and then the angel Gabriel appears at uh, verse 28. Um, and the angel came in unto her and said, Hail thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying. Um, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> she has just met an angel. Um, Zachariah previously has uh, had dealings with angels. Many people have had dealings with angels. 
Uh, and she is um, terrified. But actually, the text is very clear. She's, she's not terrified by his appearance. Uh, you know, it's, it, that's, not, that's not what causes her alarm. What causes her alarm is his saying, you're favored by God. Um, and she, she just doesn't understand that. Um, and Gabriel goes on and tells her uh, what's going to happen uh, and that the Holy Ghost is going to come upon her and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. That's verse 35. And therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Um, Zechariah earlier in Luke 1 uh, has been uh, met by the angel. The angel has told Zechariah that Elizabeth in her old age is going to conceive. And uh, Zechariah, uh, I paraphrase him, says, well, how, how do I know that's true? <laughs> and I'm an angel and I've come from God. I stand in the presence of God. That's why you know. Anyway, Mary has none of that response. Mary's response is absolute uh, model faith. Uh, she believes, um, and uh, let it be so. And so she um, becomes a, a, a model disciple. Verse 38, Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. For sure, she doesn't fully <coughs> comprehend the word. Um, how could she? Well, we still struggle to understand what happened to Mary. But the angel speaks, Mary believes. That's faith. Um, and she is a classic example of the Christian believer. And so she goes on uh, from verse 46 uh, to magnify the, her God, uh, the Magnificat. Um, and it is, I trust you'll see, something of Mary's Christmas list. It's not, this is what I want. Um, that's our Christmas list. All I want for Christmas is, <clears throat> but it is all I have been given by grace. Uh, through faith. Uh, verse 28, the angel came into her and said, Hail thou that are highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Uh, God showered grace upon Mary. Uh, that's what he does in the life of any Christian. Uh, it's grace. By grace you've been saved. Um, She's not done anything. She doesn't deserve this visitation. Um, but grace comes to her. And she believes. <clears throat> and uh, her faith is an exemplar. Um, verse 45. Uh, Elizabeth says to her, full of the Holy Spirit, Elizabeth, and she says, Blessed is she that has believed. For there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. She's been told what's going to happen. And she believes. Um, and, and because she's believed, then she will see the things that have been promised to her. She is a model Christian believer. The things we have believed the promises of God that he has made to us and to his people will come to pass. So what does she believe? Um, and she tells us um, what she believes. Um, what she believes by faith <clears throat> is that there's a savior for me, for Mary. That's the first thing. That's, that's what fills her soul with delight. And uh, 
We see that. Verse 46, Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, my spirit hath rejoiced in God, my Savior. Um, so uniquely, you know, Mary's position is absolutely unique, but her, the means of our salvation, um, I, 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 those means are common to every Christian. So uniquely for her, my baby, Mary's baby, is my savior. Uh, in my womb, I am, <clears throat> I am carrying <clears throat> the savior of the world, and he's going to be the king of an everlasting kingdom. But for Mary, first and foremost for Mary is, there's a savior for me. <clears throat> My spirit hath rejoiced in God, my Savior. Uh, and we, we look on this great mystery uh, with awe and reverence. But let's be clear, every time she hears and feels the heartbeat of her baby, she feels the heartbeat of Almighty God. Every time the baby kicks in the womb, Mary is kicked by the Son of God. Mary is a sinner, despite what many make of her. She is a sinful woman, but she is given birth to her own Savior. And that realization um, is a realization that's been made known to her by the angel Gabriel. And she believes it by faith. And that's, that's the number one on our Christmas list. And friends, your Christmas list is woefully poor and inadequate if it doesn't have I want a saviour for Christmas. Or more precisely, I need a saviour for Christmas. And in all the hubbub and discussion and talk about Jesus, the Christ child, and the baby in the manger, I don't want to lose the greatest need I have. This Christmas, I want that Jesus to be my Savior. I need him because I know my heart and I know that I'm full of sin. And I don't need anyone to persuade me that I fall short of the glory of God and that I have no hope unless God comes to me by grace like he did to the Virgin Mary. I need a savior. That's, if that's not the top of your Christmas list, then nothing else matters. Her position is a unique position. Her womb is shrouded in divine mysteries. Um, we read verse 31. Behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. And Mary knows what Jesus means. Um, it means God is salvation. God saves. And in Mary's womb is Mary's saviour. We're told uh, elsewhere after the birth of Jesus, uh, on more than one occasion, Mary pondered these things in her heart. Um, no wonder she did. She's just a teenage girl, like any other teenage girl, and, and God has come to her, and the Son of God is being born in her, and her soul delights in God and rejoices in God, my Savior. So there's a great mystery happens. <clears throat> That's all we have is verse 31. 
to explain what happens. And her position is unique, but she becomes a Christian through grace and by faith, believing the promises of God. And, you know, she is a classic disciple of Jesus Christ. And the way that she comes to faith um, is, is, is unique, but is also common to all of us. So let me explain that. The Holy Spirit comes upon her and brings forth her child, her Savior, who's a Savior of the world. And there is a movement of God upon her, um, and, and it's impossible for us to fathom. And she brings forth a physical Jesus. The Spirit comes upon her, and in time, Jesus. But that's what happens spiritually to every Christian. When the Holy Spirit comes upon us, we don't see him, we don't hear him, we're told in John's Gospel that we know the wind and the wind blows this way and that way, but we don't know the movement of the Holy Spirit of God. And the Holy Spirit comes upon her, and she gives birth to a physical Jesus. But every Christian has to have the Holy Spirit come upon him and her, him, him or her, that we might spiritually be born again. We sing of that, and we read of it in the Word of God. We sing of it every Christmas. A little town of Bethlehem. Let me just read um, verse 3. How silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given. So God imparts to human hearts the blessings of his heaven. No ear, no ear may hear his coming, but in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive him still, the dear Christ enters in. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin, enter in, be born in us today. He was born physically in Mary through the action of the Holy Spirit. The same Christ has to be born in us spiritually or uh, we're not born. <laughs> Unless we're born again, we will never see the kingdom of God. Unless we're born again, we'll never enter into the kingdom of God. Mary, this teenage girl, a sinner saved by grace, through faith she receives the promises given to her. And what what is on her Christmas list before the Christ is born? She rejoices, there's a Savior for me, uh, and there's a Savior for you, friends. There's a Savior for us all, born uh, by faith uh, through the working, the mysterious working of the Holy Spirit of God. Um, we become the children of God. And not by the will of man, not by the will of the flesh, but by the will of God, you must be born again. Mary's a great call, a savior for me. Mary sings, he saved me, he saved me. Still, um, he saved me, he knows me. I mean, he knows all about Mary. And he's come uh, to save her and blessed her. 
Because that's what she goes on to sing about in verses 49 to 52. He's a, he's a savior of sinners. Um, <clears throat> so she says, For he that is mighty hath done to me great things. Holy is his name. His mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He has showed strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He's put down the mighty from their seats, exalted them of low degree. Mary bursts into song, I mean, who am I? Just a little Jewess, just going around my normal business, excited at the prospect of being married. And this mighty God has come. Who, who comes to save and raise up lowly sinners. He will, he will humble the proud. He will destroy the proud heart. He's not come for, for the self-righteous. He's not come for the deserving. There is none who deserve. But he's come for the meek and the lowly. The sin ruined. The helpless. He's come for those who will cry out, God, be merciful unto me, a sinner. And Mary has grasped early on what many take a long, long time to discover, that Jesus Christ, the child, the infant of Mary, the Son of God is his name. He's come into the world to save sinners. And friend, you need him. We all need him. And we can't let another Christmas go by. We can't have a Christmas list that's filled with stuff. What shall it profit a man, a woman, a boy and a girl if we collect stuff? And every other Christmas we collect more stuff so that we inherit the whole, the whole world but we forfeit our own soul. Like Mary, take Jesus by faith, magnify him, give glory to him and to him alone. So Mary delights in our Savior even before he's born, but she believes who he is because she believes the word of God spoken to her by the angel Gabriel. And it's her savior because he saves sinners and she knows her great needs and she rejoices in him. But she sees also that Mary is to give birth to a Savior who is her Savior and the Savior of sinners and a Savior to share with other sinners. He's not just come for her. And he's not just come for you. He's the Savior of the world, which is what she cries with joy and delight in verse 54. He hath helped hope in his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spake to our fathers, to Abram, and to his seed forever. He's the savior of the world. And Mary's expecting the Messiah, the Christ. <laughs> she, she certainly is not expecting that she's going to give birth to him. But she knows who he is. He, he's the savior. He's the king of the Jews. He's the Jews' promised Messiah. He's going to reign over the kingdom of David. He's King David's greater son. He's the fulfillment of all the promises made to Abraham. Through Abraham, I will bless you and make you a blessing to many nations. And he's come. And before he's born of the Virgin Mary, Mary knows he's a savior to be shared. And friend, this morning, if you're a Christian, you need to hear the call of the Virgin Mary. We all need to hear this call. This Jesus isn't for us. 
simply to keep and delight in this time of year, every day, but especially this time of year, there's a world that lies in darkness, and we've got a Jesus to share. He's the Savior of the world. So how's your Christmas list now? Is it just a new Xbox and a new phone? We need we need this vital Jesus to borrow someone else's phrase. And everything that we hope for in Christmas is woefully inadequate and will not fill our greatest needs. We need, perhaps, to go and rewrite our Christmas list. God, be merciful. Give me Jesus as my Savior. I need a Savior. He's Jesus. is a Savior of sinners. He's a Savior to have, to love, to magnify, and there's a Savior to share with others. He's the promise, the fulfillment of the promise of all the promises made through King David, through Abraham, through all the old covenant, and he's come. We need him. We don't need to wait until Christmas Day to have him. Mary didn't wait for the first Christmas Day to have him. She received him by faith. And you and I can receive him by faith today. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, turn from your sin. Uh, call on him. Cast out my sin and enter in. Be born in me today. Amen. We're going to sing uh, what we read earlier, Little Town of Bethlehem. Um, it's a great, it's a great hymn. Uh, one of the things about these Christmas hymns is we should sing them far more often. <laughs> o little town of Bethlehem. O holy child of Bethlehem, verse 4, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin, enter in, be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. Oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. And uh, if you know him, uh, and if you've prayed this prayer that we're about to sing, and, and you know that he's come, and he's cast out your sin, and you're born anew in him today, Christ in you the hope of glory, then you join with fellow Christians as we come to remember him, because the babe in the manger is the man who went to the cross to deal with all our sin. O oh, little town of Bethlehem, let's stand and sing.
Father God, we thank you that the Christ has come and that he's Jesus because he'll save us from our sins and he's Emmanuel because he's God with us. May we know thy presence with us as we continue to worship you and as those who believe, Lord, be with us as we remember that the child in the manger became the man on the cross to atone for all our sin. And Lord, we thank you for this first advent, but we take of the bread and the wine until his second and final advent. Hasten that day. Lord, any leaving us now, we pray that you would bless them. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen.